Yeah, and today I'm surrounded by boxes. <laughs> the reason for that is I thought I would go through my rather giant pile of works in progress and just count up how many there are because I'm starting to think I've got too many and I should probably do something about that. So I've pulled out all my boxes and my partially quilted quilts and I thought I'd show them to you. Let's start with this one. This is the box I actually added to my pile most recently because a couple of weekends ago I went to a quilt as you go class and as part of that class we made little mini quilt tops that we used different techniques for putting the sashing on and connecting the blocks together and of course as you go all I've got to do on them is put the binding on so put them in a box and put them away I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them once they're done I made them out of very scrap fabric just as a I want to learn these techniques I don't want to try them on something that I might mess up so that's a short project but I've got to get round to it this may be a theme of today Next in the pile, and this is at the completely other end of the scale. Project I actually started before I even began quilting. It is a quilting project, but I hadn't ever done any quilting before. I used to do a lot of cross stitch in the catalogue for a company that I'd quite often buy cross stitch kits from. Came across this ad for a quilt and. I bought the kit because it was interesting and I got this far. I thought it was quite cute and then the next step was to applique on some more shapes on top of it and I didn't know how to do that and I kind of put it away thinking one day I'll look up how to do it and I never did. What I'm going to do with this but I found it in the bottom of a drawer the other day and thought yeah I should add that to my pile of projects to work on to do something with this watercolour quilt. This little box is another project I'm not really sure what I want to do with. Last year when I had Covid I had the usual week of sitting on the couch watching videos and not really wanting to do anything too intellectual so I was playing with an idea I'd seen on a YouTube channel. I can't remember the name of it, so I will put it. I'll put a link or a, I'll put the name up or something so you, without me seeing this. But what she was doing was exploring a style of embroidery, which was all done on a grid and I thought looked really interesting. So I found some old embroidery threads and some bits of fabric and I just started making these blocks that didn't require a lot of intellectual capacity to do. They just were patterns and to play with. So I want to turn them into something but I'm not quite sure what yet. So they're in a box for me to one day pull them out, maybe combine them with something else and make them into, I don't know. They're in a box therefore it's a project. Ah now this is an interesting one. This predates my YouTube channel because this is when I used to have a blog and as I was getting into quilting I was doing blog posts that I called the block of the whenever. Kind of like a block of the month but I wasn't that regular with posting so it was just whenever I felt like posting. The idea was I had a layer cake of K facet fabrics and I would use each square to make traditional quilt block and then I was going to make a sampler or something. I had a whole load of K-facet fabrics. I had a whole load of solids that went with them, similar sort of colour schemes. And I was combining them to make some traditional blocks. I don't know how many blocks I made but I kind of got bored with the idea of just making simple blocks. And I think what was boring me was the idea of making a traditional sampler where you just have a 4x5 grid of blocks with a bit of sashing. So I'm thinking what I might do with this 
is maybe make some blocks in other sizes so that it can have a more interesting layout and that might re-inspire me to go back to it. Another one I'm not quite sure what to do with. This was actually a block swap organised by a YouTuber Oh, whose name I've also forgotten. I'm, I'm doing really bad at doing shout outs for people today. This was, I think, during the COVID lockdown, she was organising it. And the idea was that we were in groups and everyone in each group would send a block and a particular theme. And our theme was blue and purple. And we'd send them all over the world as an international swap. And then you'd get back blocks and you'd make a quilt out of them. Everyone had to like sign their block on the front with their name and where they were from so that you'd kind of have this record of this project you all worked on collaboratively. The trouble is, as you might remember, postage and shipping during the COVID lockdowns got a bit messy and a lot of the blocks just disappeared and never arrived. Up with about two-thirds of the blocks I was supposed to get. I kind of put it aside thinking, well, maybe the postage will sort itself out eventually and these parcels will turn up. But they haven't. That's obviously several years ago now, so I really should find something to do with these blocks because they're, they're really some quite pretty blocks. What I do is make some more blocks so that I've got enough for an actual quilt. That's another one for the one-day list. Now this box I shouldn't be showing you because this is the box for our community quilt along that is coming up in a couple of months. This is a quilt along I'm doing with Peter from Concrete Mount Scrapmore, Michelle from Bits and Pieces Quilting, and with Kelly from Kelly's Quilts and Cruises. If you're not already following those three quilters, you should be, because they're pretty cool quilters and also they might be dropping a few hints here and there about what's coming up. Can't show you the blocks that are in here but I can show you some of the fabrics. The blocks are hidden right at the bottom underneath all the scraps of fabric so you can't actually see what's in the box. It's from the fabrics what it is we're making. You have to wait until I think our first video is going up in the first week of July and then you'll be able to see what it is we're doing. It's going to be really good. But that's my secret box. Now this box was supposed to be a YouTube video and it will be one day. So the reason why whenever I look at my stash I think I don't have very many orange fabrics. And that's because they're all in this box. I had an idea for a video where I wanted to look at foundation paper piecing. Now I've been taught three quite different methods for how you do paper piecing and I thought it'd be quite fun to make a video that compared the three methods. What's the best method to use? Have a go at designing a block and I'm quite proud at the block I came up with. This is my test block make sure it worked so I was going to make this block three times using the different techniques and compare and contrast it's going to take a lot of filming and just seems like a really big filming project so one day but yeah when I've got more than a weekend to film in now this box I don't know how many projects are in it because this is my scrap block box this is a whole load of blocks that I'm working on and haven't finished yet. Scrap blocks are in a colour scheme and some are just any old scraps sewn together. There's at least two different scrap quilts I want to make out of here but given the number of blocks that are in there I think it's probably more likely to be three maybe four quilts in this box. If, if I need to make a quilt for a charity I can very quickly cut some blocks out of this box. I count a little bit, but it's some number of quilts are in here. Then this last box also has a couple of projects in it, and it represents a mistake that I think a lot of beginner quilters make, and I certainly made it. When you're first starting quilting, your patchworking skills are usually a bit ahead of your quilting skills. Quite often what people do is exactly what I did. They have a beautiful quilt top that they've made and they think I'm not good enough at quilting yet to be able to quilt it. I'll put it away until I get better and then 
you kind of forget about it and you never do it. And by the time you come back to it, you're not as interested in the quilt top as you were when you first started. This quilt top was using, I think it was a Missouri Star pattern. This is how long ago I made this. This was in the days when I actually like followed other people's patterns. The pattern used a jelly roll and jelly rolls are really expensive in New Zealand. They can go for around $100 a piece. So I bought the cheapest jelly roll I could find and like the fabric doesn't really inspire me greatly but it was cheap and I just wanted to try the pattern. I also would have liked to put a border on it but because it was a cheap jelly roll I couldn't find matching fabric anywhere because it was probably an end of line one. By the time I came to quilt it I was kind of uninspired so I just put it in a box and one day I've got to get it out and just quilt it. I, I should just do a really simple quilting design on it, make it into a charity quilt, someone will love it. And this project, I had an idea for the quilting, but at the time I felt like I wasn't a good enough quilter to carry out what I wanted to do. So I thought I'll just leave it and put it in a box. And how many years later, it's still in the box. Who knows when I'll get around to them. It's the end of the boxes, it's not the end of the projects some quilt tops here which are partially quilted so there's even less reason why they should still be in the pile. This one was supposed to be a quick and easy one that I got done in a couple of weekends. It's almost finished the only part I haven't quilted it is the border and the only reason I didn't go on and do that was because I had to take it off my machine because I needed to prep the quilt as you go blocks ready for the class I was doing. I didn't have much time so I just took this off the machine, did those and never put it back on the machine again. So that is kind of like my number one priority is to get this one finished soon. I'll probably do a video of it as well. And then this one doesn't even need to be on the machine. This is actually hand quilting. Yes, I am hand sewing something. I, I know, don't, don't faint in shock. I started this uh, in the spring, New Zealand spring. So around September, October, and as the weather warmed up, I discovered that hand quilting is not a summer activity because you've got this massive quilt on your lap and it gets really, really warm. So I put it away for the summer. So now that the weather's starting to cool down a little bit, I might get it out and finish it. There's probably not that much more work to do on it. And then this one has been in my half quilted pile for a really, really long time. This was a Cotton Cuts mystery quilt, which I did just because I wanted to see what it was like. I bought the kit, had fun putting it together, finding out what the mystery was and so on. But that's kind of when I realised that I'm not into sewing other people's patterns. I'd rather make up my own stuff. I love the colours. It's quite beautiful, but the quilt top itself didn't greatly inspire me. But I thought I'm going to improve it by doing really custom quilting on it. Make it something incredibly special. And that was how I was going to personalise it and make it my own. Because it didn't feel like my own when I was just following someone else's pattern. I've probably quilted about a quarter of it. So because I was doing such elaborate quilting I kind of started running out of ideas <laughs> so I put it aside thinking right I'll come back to it when I get inspired and I do have some ideas but it's just putting it back on the machine and, and also I ran out of basting pins for another project so I stole some from this so I have to rebaste it so it's, it's one of those they feel like too many steps to get started on it again projects but one day I will pull it out of the pile and I will finish it and then I will make the final video in the series that I was making on making this quilt. So there we are, a very tall pile of projects, that's 13 projects, maybe 14, 15, 16, who knows, depends how many projects I get out of the scrap box. It's a big number but not as big as I was worried it was going to be. <laughs> so what about you? How's your unfinished project pile looking? Have you ever counted them? Are you brave enough to count them? Do you just not want to know? Let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to do all those other internet-y things like liking and subscribing. And I will see you next time. 
Kaki Day Anor Internet.